Good morning and welcome to worship in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this third Sunday of Easter. I'm so glad you've chosen to join us in worship today. Um, my name's Pastor Jim and um, we're glad you're here. Um, today we're going to talk about breakfast on the beach with Jesus. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? Yeah, so um, it's a passage in the Gospel of John. It's actually found in other Gospels, but we're going to talk about the, and read the Gospel of John because John was there. Um, so uh, be thinking about how Jesus meets you on your beach, wherever that is. It doesn't have to be a beach. He met the disciples where they were. They were fishermen. So think about that and what that means in the 21st century. A um, couple of announcements. Um, Dawn has an announcement first. Let's yeah, do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. focus on the family bulletins for May. Those are in the back. And lastly, just a real quick uh, choir meeting after church. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn. Um, I have an announcement about Meals on Wheels. Our church has done this for a long, long time. And what we've done is the Meals on Wheels of Southern Butler County, which uh, meets and is headquartered at Glade Run Presbyterian Church down the road, uh, we've provided desserts for them during the month of May, this month, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And we used to fill that sign-up sheet, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, Aaron Urich and his group at Beatty Tech have stepped up and are going to provide desserts for Wednesdays and Fridays every week of May for us, for them. We need you to step up and provide desserts on Mondays in the month of May. So I've already asked the deacons to bring some desserts today, which we will deliver tomorrow. Because it's such short notice and you didn't know about this until right now, if you would sign this sheet and sign up to bring desserts uh, for Meals on Wheels, they are looking for pre-packaged desserts like cupcakes, cookies, so you can go out and purchase these or if you're a baker you can bake them and put them in little baggies for single servings. Um, they have currently 62 clients that they service Monday, Wednesday and Friday um, of every month. So that's about five dozen, um, if my math is correct. Um, so whatever you can provide, they'll take whatever we give them, though. So uh, whatever the deacons bring today down in the kitchen is what we're going to take tomorrow morning to them. So um, I'm going to take a page from Mike Pasquinelli's book uh, when he passed around the lawn care, the lawn cutting sign-up sheet. I'm going to pass this around today. So I've highlighted the Mondays that we need. Yeah, just bring them to the church. We will, between Karen and I, we will get them over to Glade Run. I'm sorry? Down in the fellowship hall. Yeah, it'd be best to put them in the kitchen. Yeah. That's okay. It's okay. That's an excellent effort. So you counted them already, Ed. Is that what you're saying? Becky did it. Wow. <laughs> Well, some other people brought some too, so we might be okay. Thank you for that. I don't think there was any other announcement. Was there anything else, Crystal? Did you say something to me? No. Okay. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Good morning. The call to worship is uh, from Psalm 34 through 5. Let us be called to worship with these words from the Psalms. Sing the praises of the Lord. You, his faithful people, praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Please stand if you are able as we sing hymn 2290 in the W and R hymnal. another as a sign of God's peace and Christ's friendship by saying Christ's peace be with you as we respond with also I'm sorry go ahead <laughs> may the peace of Jesus Christ be with you always please share this peace by our risen Lord with those around you in whatever ways are most comfortable by you. Let us draw near to God with sincerity of heart and full assurance of faith. Our guilty hearts sprinkle clean, our bodies washed with pure water. From Hebrews 10:22. Let us confess our sins before God in silence. Please take these few moments to speak to God silently and confess honestly your weaknesses. Sing, shout, rejoice. Jesus calls you to serve because of his love for you. He believes in you and all the gifts you have been given. Do not be afraid. Christ is with us always and forgives us always. Please stand. Praise the one who frees the prince. 
listeners turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of peace. You may be seated. Now Tammy is going to give a sermon on Kids Rock, or are you just doing Kids Rock? Okay. Kids Rock with Tammy downstairs. Dear Lord, we pray that you would open our minds to the truth of your word by means of the Holy Spirit. Open your eyes to see Jesus. Open our hearts to love him more and more. Open our will to do only that which is righteous in your sight so that your name may be glorified. Enable us to hear your still, small voice speaking in the scripture today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. Testament reading for today is Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Oh. 
Perhaps over the years you've noticed the inspirational sayings found on motivational posters in the office, bumper stickers, window postings, um, even on computer screensavers that say sayings like, no pain, no gain, right? Or when the going gets tough, the tough get going. There are lots of these. And recently I saw a list of slightly more honest sayings for office walls and car windows and screensavers that said things like, hang in there, retirement is only 30 years away. For some of us, less than that. When the going gets tough, the tough take a coffee break. Or aim low, reach your goals, and avoid disappointment. That's kind of amusing and sad at the same time. Um, many people live their lives according to that last one, though. Aim low, reach your goals, and avoid disappointment, right? But when Jesus calls to us, which is often, it's to head out into deeper waters. It's not to aim low. It's not to avoid disappointment. And it's not to always reach your goals, it's to reach his goals, right? So, and, and by the way, that means trusting him to walk with us, because he's promised that. Um, to get out of our comfort zone, in other words. Or maybe let down our nets on the other side of the boat. Think about that one. And of course, to trust him, as I said. And in the scriptures... In the Gospels, Jesus always shows up and meets people where they are, wherever they are. And he always feeds us for the road ahead, constantly. So let's read together another reappearance of Christ to his, some of his disciples, some of his apostles, more accurately, after the crucifixion. This is from John's Gospel. And it's chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. Chapter 21 in John's Gospel was b believed to have been added later. There's some debate as to who the author is. I happen to believe it's still John, but because he was a witness. So listen and read with me as we read this reading from John 21. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning... Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. May God bless our hearing of his word today. 
All praise, honor, and glory go to him. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. B and B with Jesus may seem like a nice, comfortable, relaxing title for this message to some of us. Some of you know that a and b in our world is a hotel-like destination that offers you both a bed and a breakfast, right? Or a breakfast meal. Or there's also, more popular lately, Airbnb which is a variation that was founded on the idea that an air mattress combined with a breakfast meal would save some dollars on normal rent. Did you know that? That's what Airbnb, that's how it came about. This concept and organization have become a very popular and cost-effective way for people to find rest and relaxation today, right? And there are several competitor companies doing the same thing. Jesus in the Gospels reappeared to some of his disciples in several different locations, as we know. Last week, we talked about Jesus appearing behind locked doors twice, to some of them without Thomas, and the second time with Thomas. Today's reappearance happens after the event last week, and this situation includes breakfast on a beach. Beach and breakfast with Jesus is what we're discussing today and what it means for us. So to begin with, let's set up the context of this passage in John's Gospel. Here are the apostles after another week since all the events of Holy Week and Easter Day. Simon Peter decides he's going fishing once again back to what is familiar to him and others, right? They're professional fishermen. And in in fact, the other apostles join him, at least six of them join him, we're told in John's gospel. We are even told it was Thomas, Nathaniel, James, and John, and two others. So they're named, except for the two others. Well, what else did we expect them to do? They're still... Fearful, confused, lacking direction, not confident about what they're supposed to do next. Look at all that's happened around them, after all, in a short period of time, right? Jesus had risen, and he had appeared to them twice by this time. But they had no idea what was supposed to happen next or what was going to happen next. Jesus just seemed to show up when they were gathered together, and it was usually unannounced. He just shows up, right? Whether it's on, in a room behind locked doors or whether it's on the beach. They had no clear direction from him yet as to what they were supposed to do for him. I can almost hear them saying to each other, let's just wait and see. Jesus is going to come about, come around sometime. Let's wait and see when he drops by today. So Peter leads them to do some work. This was not a vacation day off type of fishing, by the way. These are professional fishermen. This is what they are trained to do. It was work. It was their daily work. Before Jesus had called them, this was their livelihood. This was their trade, right? And he called them from the beach. If you remember, back at the beginning of the Gospels, right? So we've come full circle. We're back on the beach, and they're fishing once again. So now Peter feels like doing some familiar-type work because of his confusion and a little bit of fear. Take his mind off everything that has happened, especially his own denial of Christ. It's back to work, back to fishing. Little did they realize, though, that they would be, this would be the breakfast of a lifetime, the breakfast of their future, a talk about their calling, their future days, their future mission. 
And it is a breakfast on the beach talk about our calling and our mission and our future, whatever our beach might be. Think about this. Jesus meets the apostles right where they are, right? Right where they're most familiar. These fishermen happen to be near the beach on this day. And here at the end of the story, Jesus takes them right back to the beginning of the story when he met them in the first place, by the sea, when he called them from the nets and invited them to come follow me. Follow me, he told them, and I will make you fishers of men. Now, once again, they're going fishing. And Jesus' message for us is the same. He meets us wherever we are and instructs us to go fishing for people. So our first message from this short passage is, is that is loud and clear from G John's description of this beach and breakfast with Jesus is that he meets and greets us wherever we are. Even if you think you are not, you are not a normal person, how many of you think you're a normal person? Nobody puts their hand up. See, that's a pretty common, I don't think I'm normal. In fact, I, I, I'm, that verifies my thinking. Thank you, Linda, I think. The apostle Peter, Peter was not a normal person, nor were any of the other apostles in their minds, right? In fact, he, Peter was not normal from the day he met Jesus. I recently read this amusing description of a person visiting a mental health institution or asylum. And during this visit, the visitor asked the director, well, how do you determine whether or not a patient should be admitted or institutionalized? Well, the, said the director, we fill up a bathtub, we offer a teaspoon, a teacup, and a bucket. And to the patient, and we ask him or her to empty the bathtub. Oh, I understand, said the visitor. A normal person would use the bucket because it's bigger than the spoon or the teacup. No, said the director. A normal person would pull the plug. Do you want a bed near the window? <laughs> you see, the fact that Peter had not been normal from the day Jesus came into his life, didn't mean he was going to get a bed by the window in a mental institution. No, what it meant for Peter was that God had big plans for him. God would distinguish him from, quote, normal people in many different ways than that. God had, had much bigger plans to fulfill through Peter. But in order to fulfill those plans, God met Peter right where he was, as abnormal as he thought he was, right? In this earthly life and walked with him through the rest of his earthly life. For the apostle Peter, there were some things that he had to let go of or give up, just like us, right? Just one of those was the heavy burden of his denial of Christ. You remember the story three times. Right there on the beach, probably close to where he had originally called these disciples to turn them into apostles, Jesus had breakfast ready with bread and fish. Hmm, bread and fish. Does that sound familiar at all to anybody else? Jesus used bread and fish a lot. The sacramental nature of this meal is what I can appreciate. This last breakfast, if you will, means that Jesus gave to these apostles, including Peter, exactly what they were hungry for, exactly what they needed. Just as he had offered himself to them on every day of his earthly ministry. Just as he had offered himself to them on the cross just as he had offered himself to them in the broken bread of that final Passover meal that he shared with them. Jesus once again offers them himself 
the bread of life on the beach where they were. Likewise, today in our celebration of communion, Jesus gives all of us exactly what we need as we share this meal. Today, Jesus meets every one of us where we are. Finally, what is the second and perhaps the more important message of breakfast and beach with Jesus today? I think this second message is quite simple and yet very challenging for us at times. The calling of these apostles in our reading this morning is still the same. He's been telling them this for three years, right? To be about the business of casting the net, fishing for people, drawing others into this fellowship of Jesus Christ, reaching others with the good news of the empty cross and the empty tomb as well. Their business is fishing, and our business is fishing. Our business as Presbyterians, this sounds odd, our business as Presbyterians is fishing for people, right? As a local church at Valencia Presbyterian Church, we say our vision is to grow the body of Christ through faith, love, and service. I hope that anytime anybody walks up to you, to anybody in here or as a member of this church and says, why do you do what you do? Why do you go there on Sunday morning? Why do you pray? Why do you read scripture? I hope your response is, I want to grow the body of Christ through faith, love, and service. Now, those are big words, and it means something different to every one of us. It means something different every day of our lives. But I hope you know to give that answer. That's our core business. Therefore, the immediate question and challenge becomes, how do we do that in this world around us today? Jesus gives us, along with his apostles on the beach, a suggestion. And he says it, not in these words, but this is the message. The business is fishing. Your business is fishing but sometimes you need to try the other side of the boat. There's a no novel idea. Fish from the other side of the boat. We've been doing this business of growing the body of Christ for over 150 years here at Valencia. And we've always fished from this side of the boat. We've always done these same things. We've always done A, B, and even C. We've always done things a certain way, so why change now? I will tell you why. Because Jesus suggests often and sometimes that we try the other side, that we try the other side of the boat for fishing. The disciples knew they were in the fishing business. They were professional fishermen, right? They knew how to fish. They were successful at it. They were all professionals. They, so that is what they did in our reading today. They went back to what they knew, what they had done over and over and over again. They returned to the same old boats, to the same nets, using the same old techniques, fishing the same old lake, and getting the same old results. Then along comes Jesus, reappearing, saying, Say, boys, how about this? Why don't you try throwing your nets over the other side of the boat? That's where the fish are. Now, John doesn't record it, but I am sure there was a big silence right there from these professional fishermen. Had to be. What? What did he say? Then the disciples, I'm sure, responded, the right side of the boat, you've got to be kidding me. Never did it that way before. Oh, no, 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 no. We've always fished on the, this side of the boat, never the right. That seems strange and uncomfortable. If you change this, who knows what might happen? 
could be a slippery slope. Why soon you'll have people fishing out of the back of the boat. You'll have people fishing from the front of the boat. And the next thing you know, we'll even have women fishing from the boat. And then we'll have to put on clothes. That's probably what they thought. Anyway, anyway. And well, it could start a whole downward slide, right? Until the whole civilization goes right down the tubes. Does that sound familiar to anybody? That's some thinking today amongst Christ followers. I know that John doesn't record that conversation, but I've been around the church long enough and I expect it happened. There have been Christians for over 2,000 years who have been willing to cast their net on the other side of the boat. John Calvin, John Wesley, Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, Rick Warren, just to name a few, because each of them was willing to cast their net in a different way on the other side of the boat. God blessed their results in big ways. Jesus says, cast your nets on the other side. The gospel writer then records, and now they were not able to haul them in. There were so many. 153 to be exact in John's gospel. There's a way too much written about that number, by the way. <laughs> it's not important. It's important to realize it was too much. It was more than they had ever caught before. The message Jesus wants us to hear is to shine the light of the gospel outward, even if it is uncomfortable, different, in a new way. There are over 300,000 Christian churches in the U.S. Some are antique, some are new, some are plain, some are ornate, some are not plugged in, and some of the ones plugged in keep their light mainly to themselves, like a desk lamp, right? Right? Just like a desk lamp, God blesses the ones, though, and it's been shown over and over and over. God blesses the lamps that shine out. Friends, how do we shine the light in a world frozen by fear, flawed by distrust, fractured by dissension, a world every day helplessly teetering on the edge of disaster, or so we think? Look at the example of the apostles. What did they do? It's the same amount of challenges, not exactly the same, but the same amount of challenges that they faced in their world. The world of the first century. It was the world the disciples faced. This morning, as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, put yourself in Peter's place, or any of them, We've each been called to breakfast on the beach with Jesus and realize our own denial. Think about that. We each have those moments in our lives which only Jesus can redeem and forgive. Bring them to him today. Give them up to him. Receive the bread Jesus has to offer. Experience that forgiveness for yourself. No one has prepared a bed by the window for you, as abnormal as you are. But Jesus has prepared bread for you. So come to the table. Breakfast is ready. Amen. Let's all stand, if we're able, and state what we believe. This is, the, this is a portion of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the only begotten of the Father, before all worlds, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and became incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, 
and was made man. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. Amen. Won't you please be seated? In our time of prayer, we want to offer up um, all of those people, places, and circumstances on our hearts and minds. So what are your joys and concerns this day to give up to God? Mike, thank you. Crystal. I'd like to ask prayers for my Aunt Paula and Uncle Don Corey, who unexpectedly lost their um, 35-year-old son, Blake, last week. Um, And I would also like prayers for the Grove City College um, and the parents of a student um, named Kylie who lost her life last week. What was your aunt's name again? Paula. Paula. Thank you. Anyone else? Carrie. If I could ask for prayers for Brian's oldest son, Brian Jr. Um, The trailer park where he lives in, the trailer next to him caught fire, which also caught his trailer on fire. Both trailers are a total loss. And um, no one was injured. so that, that's the, uh, the blessing in it, that um, no lives are lost uh, other than um, the other trailer. He did lose his dog. But, um, but um, prayers for, for, for both families and um, especially for, for Brian's oldest son as he has to rebuild him and his girlfriend and find a place to live now. Karen. for um, all the runners today that are in at the marathon because of this bad weather. We have two grandchildren, one that's running the 26 miles and the other one that's doing a relay. So it's a concern for me that they're running in this bad weather. So uh, just pray that they all get through this, uh, all the runners, without any uh, trouble. <laughs> so. Thank you. Well, some are. <laughs> Anyone else? Linda. That's okay. I've got my own Use your mic. Just stay there. Yeah. Uh, healing for my neighbor, Ann. She had her hip replaced a couple weeks ago, and she's not recovering too well. This is a, mostly a joy uh, and a concern. Ken and I will be heading, driving an old car up to New York City. I've never been there to visit, and he, I don't, he never has either. So we're excited and a little concerned and a little happy and a little, I don't want to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I would appreciate your prayers and thoughts for a safe, uh, safe journey there and back. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And thank you, Anna Mae. Thanks. Let's take all of our prayers to God. Lord Jesus, um, as we relax, as we go through some R&R, B&B, breakfast on the beach, we sit back and we relax. The rush of Easter is over. The excitement which carried us to Easter and to the room where Jesus appeared to his disciples 
is wearing off. We just aren't sure what to do now that the journey to the cross is completed. Help us to understand that the cross is not our ending point, but rather our beginning, our pivotal point. Help us to be people of enduring faith and strong faith, who have seen the light of resurrection, who know that you have conquered death. Fear cannot acclaim and bind us. You have released us to serve others and witness to the glorious good news. As we have brought the names of those near and dear to us, to you in prayer, help us to feel the rejuvenating power of your love in our lives. Help us to feel the confidence that you hear us and you answer us for those people and those circumstances and those places by providing what is needed, what is most needed, and drawing people closer to you. Inspire us to move into compassionate ministries to your world, for we ask those things in Jesus' name that we would be blessed to be a blessing to others. Lord God, we lift up um, Paula and Dawn, and we lift up the Grove City students that have lost a friend. Give them all your peace and your reassurance. Take them by the hand and walk with them. Lord God, we lift up Brian Jr. and ask for your relief and your healing and your confidence and answers to a lot of questions on the loss of a home. We thank you that there were no injuries, that there was no death, and we thank you that your presence has been felt. Lord God, we lift up all the runners in Pittsburgh on this day that they would be safe and secure in finishing their challenge. And we lift up the trip coming up to New York City for Ken and Linda. May they be safe and secure and bring them back safely to us. Allow them to enjoy their time away. We lift up Anne for healing, continued healing and recovery. May your presence be felt by her and those around her. And may she recover to serving you again with her gifts. Father God, we come to you today confident that you are sharing with us your presence, your peace, your healing, your strength, and your faithfulness. So as we celebrate this day, open our hearts and minds to your presence for you are living with us and in us through the Holy Spirit. And we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, using the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. We know from Luke's gospel on the road to Emmaus, Jesus reappeared to some of his disciples and they did not know who he was. They shared conversation, they walked with him. It wasn't until he broke bread and shared the cup that their eyes were opened and they saw who Jesus is. May our eyes be opened this day to the presence of the living Lord. God has promised us that. God has promised also to walk with us, to share with us, to commune with us. And so we are blessed to be a blessing. So just as Jesus lifted up his thankful praise to God in heaven, let us lift up our thankful praise. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Remembering your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this cup and joyfully celebrate the dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you as a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and of the cup that our sharing of the bread that we break and the cup that we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread, and after he had given thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. the body of Christ given for you. In the same manner, our Lord and Savior took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he poured it out and gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup 
is the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink all of it, and do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The blood of Christ shed for you. Jesus told us, whenever you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. Please join me in the prayer after communion. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, thanks and praise to you, our risen Lord. Again, you have nourished us at your holy table with your own body and blood. By your word and supper, may we be led into this world to spread the joy of your resurrection for all. Guide us and walk with us as we proclaim this good news. In your strong and living name we pray. Amen. Friends, the Holy One has given us fish and bread for a lifetime. Let us now share from our many resources that through our gifts, God's will may be done in this world. Prayerfully and carefully give from your blessings toward growing the body of Christ through faith, love, and service. And thank you for your continued and faithful commitment to God's work in this world. We are his hands and feet. Lord God, we bring you these gifts, a portion of what you have blessed us with. Use them, spread them, multiply them for your work in this world. As your hands and feet, may we be blessed to be a blessing to others. And we thank you for your generous gifts to us so that we may share them with other people here and around the world. We 
We ask and pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join me in singing our closing hymn, When the King Shall Come Again. of God, which surpasses all of our understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So go with God's love, Jesus Christ's peace, and the fellowship guidance and strength of the Holy Spirit today and every day. Amen.